G'day, it's Ralph here from VideoProc Converter, and today in this video, I'm gonna walk you through what VideoProc Converter can do and how to do it. Now, there's a lot to cover, and I'll introduce you to all the tools, but to save you time, we've arranged some timestamps, so you can jump to the part of the video, the part of the tutorial you most need. Now, if you love what we do, please give this video a thumbs up, give it a subscribe, ask any questions you like in the comments below. And let's go. First step is to check the settings. We do this by clicking on it down here and we have the option to choose video, DVD, downloader. All the defaults are pretty good. You just want to make sure that your hardware acceleration is good to go and that it's going to put the files where you want the files to go. Have a bit of a look and a feel through those different options. And when you're happy with them, you simply close and we get stuck into it. Now that we're ready to go, we're going to jump into it by clicking on the video icon, which is the video editor. Now let me walk you through all of our editing tools using a drone video I took of some birds and a fishing boat the other day. So we simply add the video in by selecting video and there it is. That opens up nicely. You can also drag and drop that in if you choose. Let's start by cutting this video up. We start by selecting the video output that we want. Let's go M4 at H2.64, and that enables us to click here with cut. We can then choose where we cut this video to, and I might want to choose these two seconds just here and go cut. Then I simply go done, use high quality engine, and run. That will export the video. And here we go, all three seconds of it. Beautiful stuff. Now let's crop the video instead of cutting it. We simply select crop instead, and we can take our cut back if we like. So let's reverse our cut and go to crop. And crop, I can enable my crop here. And I'm gonna go with a one by one crop so you can really get a feel and a sense for this. I can move it across. I can even make it smaller if I so choose. When I'm happy with that, I go done run and let's have a look there is my video nice and squarely cropped let's say you want to rotate the video we can do that quite easily too and we simply do that by rotating left or we can rotate right whatever you so choose I can even horizontally flip it if I like or vertically flip it when I'm happy with that I'm gonna go done and then I'm gonna go run and let's have a look at that there we go upside down as she goes all right, now let's slow down and speed up this video. We have the two options to do that. We click under audio video here and we can speed up this way or we can slow down that way. The green means the frames per second allows for comfortable speed up or slow down, but we can actually, let's just slow it down to here at 25% of what its original speed was. Simply go done, run. You can already see it's 12 seconds, which is on. And look at those birds. They're flying in slow motion. It looks jittery because of the frame rate that this video was taken on. So just be aware of that as you slow it down, you'll, the frame rate becomes more apparent. Now, what about muting a video? Well, if I go back to here, I can go my audio and video, but I can disable all audio tracks there and it creates a complete mute video of which this already is. Now, let's say you want to add a watermark. You simply go to watermark. And you have a couple of options. First of all, you need to enable the watermark and you can create it with text. So you can say, this is a watermark. And then you can place that wherever you like at whatever size you like, as long as it fits in the frame. Or you can put in an image. I can add an image and I have my own logo, which I will use as a watermark in this case. I can put a time code on that. I can change the transparency. So I can change the transparency by less or by have more transparency. You see, so if I was watermarking it, you probably watermark around there. Um, I can put a time code in, um, which means uh, the time code becomes the watermark up here. But if I go back to my image and I can choose again where it goes, we're using these indicators just here. I go done. Let's have a look at that and see how it comes out. There you go. Look, it's got my watermark on it. <laughs> how about that? Notice it's still in slow-mo and it's still cropped. And the reason is because you need to go back and undo those changes or start a new video. It will build on the edits you've been doing so far. We're going to change what this video looks like now by changing the effects. Of it now that gives us the opportunity to change brightness contrast saturation hue gamma and so on or I can use a number of presets 
to get the feel I want. So let's go with negate and then I can, can change what that actually looks like and feels and that is just wild. So let's go with that and see what that looks like. Oh, there you go. I don't know if you're in a horror movie, maybe that's the one for you. Now, if you do want to go back, you simply select the function that you were using and you press reset and it resets what you were looking at. And then you go to none and done. If I want to undo my crop, I simply select and disable crop. You get the gist of where we're going. Now let's talk about some advanced edits that might be of help to you. Now let's say you want to do a bit of an advanced edit and split the video into equal parts. Well, I've already cut it. So let me undo my cut by changing that, by moving that to there and that to there and go done. So we are ready. And then I'm going to go toolbox. I'm going to go split. And in split, when I double click on that, I want to split video averagely into two segments. I can change it into quantity of seconds if I so choose. I go done. Once I go done, we have a look at that by exporting the video to see how it comes out. And it gives me a little subfolder that if I click on it, I have one and two. That's the first half of my video. It goes for five seconds. And here's the second half of my video. It goes for another five seconds. And there you go, guys. Easy as that. Now let's merge a couple of videos together and let's just say I do like my top down birds on fire one. I just drag that in. I can go to toolbox and then to merge. And if I double click on that, I make sure my resolution's good. I like 4K and my time is good. Press done. As my two videos there. I simply press run and it should export those two videos back to back like they're connected together. Here's my merged video. Let's double click and have a look at that. And if we press play and just move through this video, and it just changes from one to the other. Note, it can change any ratio and stick them together. So you don't even need to worry about making all that pretty. It can just whack together two videos as you like. Let's talk about how you trim a video. If I go to toolbox, I go trim, double click on this, and I can trim it this way, or I can trim it that way. And once it's trimmed to where I want, I can even choose the specific time if that suits me. I go done, run, and it exports to a trimmed version of that video. See, five seconds. We've lopped off the first half here. We've lopped off the second half there. It's just as easy if you want to create an MKV maker from a video. You simply go to here, double click. There's some instructions there, but it tells you how to do it. I select all of our video and go done. And as always, you export with those settings and you're ready to go. And you have an MKV file to do with what you wish. Okay, what about when you've got footage and it's quite shaky? You forgot to put your stabilizer on, say in your action camera, you've been got this footage and it's not quite as smooth as you want. Well, we can help with that with the deshake function. And so you import your video and here's a video that I've created earlier. You want to go down to toolbox. Once you're on toolbox, you select deshake by double click. The first option is shakiness. And so basically it's how shaky it is. Now what you need to know is the further to the right these scales go, the better quality result you get, but the longer it takes to process it. I will go somewhere around, well, let's put it on nine. Uh, accuracy. Accuracy, the higher the value is, the more accurate the match will be, but the slower the processing will become. So we want it as accurate as possible. And I'm going to bump that right up to 15. And let's talk about step size. Step size is the higher the value is, the bigger the range of searching identified macro blocks would be. So the high valuable is suitable, suitable for severely jittering frames. So I'm not going to put that all the way up, but I will put it considerably up. And then mini contrast. Mini contrast is the smaller the threshold is, the higher the output quality will be. Bigger value will lead to faster processing, yet poorer quality. It will not process darker blocks below the set threshold. You could set it right down the bottom and you will get as quality as you can. And you can also then, if you look down here, it says start and end time, and you can choose the, the clips of minute nine. You can say, I actually only want to stabilize this particular section of the video. Once I go done, it then comes back to our original screen. And now let's take our video, cut it in half, and show you what the stabilized half looks like versus the unstabilized half. Now, as you can see, the stabilized is on the left, the unstabilized is on the right. 
and the right is jumping around a fair bit. Don't worry about the cut in my head, that's part of what the program does to be able to compensate for the jitteriness and the shakiness. But if you'll notice on the left side, that's quite smooth. It's quite good. And on the right hand side, there's a fair bit of movement. And you can see just above my head that tree, the tree on the left hand side is quite stable and the tree on the right hand side is jumping around a fair bit. So what about when you take footage and you need to decrease the fisheye effect? Well, that's what we're gonna do now. I'm gonna take a time-lapse that I shot on my GoPro recently, and it is quite fisheye. You'll see here, look at this bend and this, it looks really fisheye. And so we're gonna fix that. We're gonna do that by going down to toolbox. We're gonna to select with a double click fisheye, and you can see there, right there, that is very much fisheye. Now with these particular controls here, you wanna go very sensitive. Here's what happens if you go oversensitive. You click that down and go preview, and look at that, it becomes almost untenable. So you need to be very careful about how you use these controls. So here's our footage, and we press preview to show exactly what these settings are um, calculated for. So these settings are giving us this. So if I move this back to zero, and I move this back to zero, that's on 50-50, and I go preview, and that's where we started. So these top two controls, change the focal point of the image based on the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. But for this particular time lapse, we want to go to the coefficient of the quadratic correction term. When we go K1, we go slightly into the negatives. And I say ever so slightly. So let's go minus 0.12. And let's go minus 0.12 here. And I go preview. Look what happens. See how straight that now is is and what it's done obviously is it's pushed in it's cropped in on what it was doing and if I go back here 0 0.2 0 0.5 preview you see the difference it's made so let's go 0 0.19 and 0 0.21 and go preview now as you can see very quickly it gets distorted we don't want to distort we just want gentle touches so about a 0.13 and a 0.12 preview and we're good to go. So let's just export that and see how it comes up against our original time lapse. Now this is where it gets super, super cool that you can change a 3D video to a 2D video. So we get rid of this video and I'm going to select here 3D to 2D. We need a video first, but it just so happens that I have a video. So I select my video by going to source files and Voyager, which is a 3D stock video. Now with that, I then go 3D to 2D. 3D works by utilizing both your eyes, which is why we have these two sections here. And so you choose the option you want there, and then you choose the output option you want here. So left eye only or right eye only. Then we just go done and go run. And we, what we will see now is a 2D render of the 3D video that we had before. And there you go. That looks pretty cool. You can imagine already just by looking at it how epic it would look if it were 3D and that, that would really lift off. You can also do the amazing work of adding subtitles or taking away subtitles. Now you need a subtitle file but this video has subtitles on it and so you simply go export subtitle and you can choose whether it's an SRT file or an ASS file and you go done. Likewise if you want to add a subtitle to it you have your subtitle file as an SRT or an ASS and then you can simply click on here on subtitle you go subtitles you can add your subtitle file and it will build in the subtitles to a video that doesn't have subtitles providing the subtitles and the video match pretty cool stuff right Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the amazing ability the Video Prop Converter has to convert file formats from one file to another. It's so easy and simple, and so we're just going to run through this, and you're going to get to see how, how simple and straightforward it is so you can easily do it should you have this challenge that you need to solve when you're by yourself. We're going to select an MOV file, bird down, MOV. Let's go MOV to MP4. So I go to video here. So I can choose target format if I want. I can go general profiles and I can choose MP4 from here or any other one I like. I can go high quality, which is a little bit slower. I can go done and then I can go run. And that exports my MOV to an MP4. 
Let me just show you what that looks like. See, it's all fine and it all works really well. Now let's take an MP4 and take an MP3 from it. And to do that, I'm gonna choose one of my vlogs that I have on here in MP4. So it's gonna load that up. This is a vlog that I recently did about a drone. And all I need to do is go to music, select MP3, choose the quality I like, make sure codec is MP3. These are all good, I'm gonna go done. Then I'm going to go run. So what's going to happen now is the audio is going to be taken from the video and given back to me as a audio file in MP3 format. Here we go. There it is. Double click on our MP3. G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and I'm on my quest to explore what options we have when it comes to L brackets for the Nikon Z9. Which So while we're on a roll, let's just change our MP3 to a WAV file by going music, my MP3 file, it loads it up and then I want to export it as a WAV file. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to make sure it's high quality. I'm going to go done. We're going to export that. And let me play it for you. G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and I'm on my quest to explore what options we have when it comes to L brackets for the Nikon Z9. Which All right, now let's say we want to take our MP4 H264, which is a certain codec, and we want to change the format of it to an MP4 HEVC. We're going to do that by importing our video which is this one. And you see at the moment, it says it's gonna go as a WAV file. We're like, no, 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 we wanna go video. We wanna go MP4, HEVC. And once we've got HEVC there, we just double click this, go high quality, go done, go export. And just to show that it all works, look at that working like a dream. Now what we're gonna do is take this MP4 file that we have and we're gonna take screenshots of it. So we're gonna break it down into photographs. Uh, it's an interesting option should you need it and there are particular videos and moments when you do. So you go to toolbox, then you go snapshot and here you get to select the part of the video that you wanna do that to. So let's say we just take this little bit here. We're gonna say we want image size, the highest resolution possible for us. We can choose PNG or JPEG. We can go with picture count. Let's go a picture count of six, go done. Then we're gonna export that. And, and here it is in birds top down 10 and we have four pictures. So three, two, one. See the birds moving? That enables you to take photographs straight off your video. Now, one of the sweet spots that Video Prop Converter is known for is converting and compressing video. So sometimes you have a really large video that you want to shrink down and make really, really smaller. So what we're going to do is take my video that is a vlog. It's 5.87 gigs. So it's a big file. I might want to send it to someone. So we need to make it smaller. There's seven different ways we can make it smaller. And we're going to move through them now to orientate you with the options that are available. First of all is the independent compression tool. So I click on the toolbox, I click on my compress, and hey here guys, I can. What's cracking this Ralph here? Now I can choose how, what sort of percentage size I want of it or what resolution I want to reduce it down to. So I might want to go 720, that's 4%. Make sure it's MP4, because I can go MKV or MOV, or I can just say my file size. So I might want to say, I want it no bigger than one gig. So I'm going to go 999 meg, I'm going to go enter on that. It's going to tell me it's 22%. And you'll notice if you have this little question mark, you click on that and it says video complexity can cause slight differences between estimated and actual file sizes. So even though you've got one gig here, it will differ slightly as you'll see in just a moment in the final compression. I'm then going to go done and then I'm going to export that and check it out. Here it is. The reduced file is 129 megs from 4.57. And let's just open it up make sure it works. And as you can see, it works beautifully. And that is a tiny file you can now use to send. And let's just skip along, make sure the video is looking good. It's looking good all the way through. So you can choose what size you export it to for the needs that you have. Once you get back to your panel, if you want to explore the other six ways of reducing the file size, we simply go to the video format that we want. Uh, we double click on this. Format option is just here. And we can choose how we might reduce the size of this video. So let's start by changing the quality of the video and look at estimated size, 12.22. 
and I can go down to here 9.87 I can go down to here 7.52 I can adjust the GOP so I can come over here and with the GOP the higher the figure the smaller the file size is and that will give me a smaller video. I can lower the frame rate so if I head over here to frame rate and it's 24 but if I go to 15 that will reduce the size again to 6.71. I can reduce the bit rate. It's automatically calculated at the moment, but if I go from 9,000 to 7,000, that will change the estimated size again. I can lower the resolution, so I can move it down to a 720 resolution, or I can adjust the audio, so I can change the bit rate on the audio and go to a lower bit rate, and that, if I go apply it to all, will change the size of this video dramatically. All of these options used with the right balance and the right insight to get the right results you want can be used and manipulated to give you the results that you require. Some of it may take some experimentation and if you have the expertise then you'll be right to push into this straight away. You can also add a shortcut to this menu. So let's say you're you're wanting to you have a particular format that you use frequently and so let's say you're, you're always um, converting to Android phone and iPad and you're doing it high quality you can just add that and stick it in right there so it can be a go-to when you come to video you can do the same with your popular so if there's something you want to make popular that you use all the time use it here if you um, have a particular device that you use frequently you can add it by using this shortcut um, the same with the music you can add any shortcut that complements what you want to do so we want to go wave and want that in my shortcut thing and it's right there so you have this amazing opportunity to speed up your editing and conversion process by adding shortcuts that you use all the time to this menu bar. Let me move into something that's going to be really helpful for all of you and that is the hardware acceleration engine. So I would suggest you have this selected all the time as well as use high quality engine. It will use your computer's resources to convert your video at a much faster and higher quality and you may need to go through the options and make sure your computer's all well represented here and using it so I'd strongly recommend that and you can also see what details so you can see which codec it is, what size it is and how long it is. You can see what audio codec is being used and at the length of audio and where your subtitles are. You can then use that information, that's what it was, this is what it's going to be, are you happy with that? If you're not, just double click on this and you can alter those things right here and tell exactly what you're going to get by looking at these two windows just here. Okay, we are flying along, so now let's just look at what we can do if we go back and select DVD. Now the DVD option has the ability to draw digital data off your DVD so you can preserve it, so you can send it on, so you can use it for whatever function you have. Now I've, I've got many DVDs of Family Holidays that we use, so I'm going to show you now how to digitize into MP4 format a video that I have on DVD that I want to cherish but isn't working because I don't have a DVD player anymore. It's worth noting that the video resolution that we had back then was about 720, so it's much less what we would expect in a 4K. So we put our DVD in, I simply go disk, it recognizes the source of it, auto detect, you can force the UDF or force the ISO, but it's always better to choose auto detect if you can. We go done, it will then analyze the DVD and put it up there and tell me that there's one title, it's one hour and 14 minutes, nine seconds long and asks me what I wanna do with it. And so often you'll have a number of titles here, you can just choose which title you'd like. So I'm gonna go from that, it's gonna take it from the main title, there's one detected, it's gonna reduce it and spit it out as an MP4 and I can just, if I like, go here and say I want high quality and again you can change any of these options if you like. You go done, use the high quality engine and I go run and it exports my DVD, my family memories that I want to cherish and hold on to and it will take some time to do this but here's what it looks like. Just to open that up and look at that, that's fabulous. Now the quality of the video wasn't great when it started, but I'm super stoked with that. That is on par with what I remember creating. Wonderful way to cherish those memories. 
Having talked about the DVD conversion, let's go back and talk about the recording option because it is terrific and there's a number of things you can do with it. First of all, we are going to record the screen. So let's just choose our desktop screen by selecting a screen and that's a screen within a screen within a screen. Yes, that's right. So when we're on desktop, we simply press record and it will go three, two, one. And then I can press play. Stop that. Then to turn this off, I simply go back to video proc converter and I press stop. Then it gives me right here the file. I go open. There's my show. As you can see, it's a screen recording of what we have. And I'm going to play that and it captures exactly what was on your screen. That's when I paused it. I had a look around. I went back to easy. What about if we just want to record part of the screen? Well, that's when we go to crop and I can choose full screen or I can go crop and you select the part of the screen that you like. So we'll select that, press escape to cancel. But if we click the tick, we are already in business. And then once it comes to this screen, I simply press record it goes three, two, one. And this is the screen that we have just recorded. And once we're happy and we've done all that, we simply knock up here to the stop button and I can screen recording tool and I can open that if I choose. And I can do a number of things within the screen. For example, I can write on it or I can uh, do a square, I can even type. And I can change the color and all of that if I like. And then I can undo anything I like, or I can just close it all down and then simply stop the recording by doing this. And that makes my recording available just here. If we go open, and you will see my screen recording available. And you can see the screen recording. If I jump forward, you'll be able to see me right on it. You have a few options when it comes to recording audio. You can record the system sounds, um, or you can turn them off, or you can choose the audio inputs. You can choose from your microphone, your Teams, or your iPhone. Look at this, this is my iPhone that's connected via Wi-Fi. And if I go, hello, how are you doing? How good's that? And so I can record the audio on my phone or the audio my phone's picking up whilst recording the screen of something different, or I can just use the microphone that's built in to the computer. What about your webcam? Let's say you just want to use your webcam and you can choose to do a screen and a camera. So screen means the screen that I'm recording here and my camera. So look at that, like that's just the top of my camera there. Um, or I can just go my camera itself and so this is me guys yeah is this a bit of a bit of a spin out let's just record one two three four and then let's do the phone one two three four four and now let's have a look back at them and see how they rate here's the first one one two three four and here's the second one on the phone. One, two, three, four, four. How good is that? Oh, the creative possibilities that you now have. Now, if you want to do picture in a picture, you simply select screen and camera and you have your desktop here and your screen here. And so let me just go and three, two, one. And here we go. I'm now looking at you and it should be recording my desktop. How exciting. To turn it off, you simply slide back into the app and press stop. And then let's just open this up and see how it went today. So here we go. Let's here we go. I'm now looking at you and it should be recording my desktop. Oh, so good, isn't it? So good. Now let's just say you've got a video on here that you want to record and you want to use the sound in there and not this sound out here. You simply turn your system sound on and your MacBook Pro sound off and that way it will only record what the computer internally hears rather than what is happening out here. Very handy uh, for certain types of projects that you might have underway. To prove this, I've got a video of me. I'm going to record this 
and I'm going to play tracking. this. this round here, and today we're talking about and I'm, filters I'm going to talk, for the DJI and then we're going to see if it records Pro. it, okay? And so that'll do us. And now I'm just going to play it back, what we just got. Up here, and today we're talking about filters from Freewell for the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And there's a few things you need to know about filters. Amazing. So you just turn off your external mics here, has the internal system sounds there, and you're good to go. And finally, I want to show you something that's that's just it's just so handy where you can use your phone. Let me turn my phone on on this. You can use your phone as a webcam. And you do that because at the moment it's microphone, but if I plug this in, so I plugged it in now to my system, and I now go to options up here. At options, I select Ralph's iPhone camera. Um, I like the medium quality is fine, but you can increase the quality just by selecting here. And then look, look. <laughs> Love it. So now I'm just going to, I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes while it's recording my screen up here. And I squiggle my mouse around. Then we're going to shut this down and see if it worked. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes while it's recording my screen up here and I squiggle my mouse around. Then we're going to shut this down and see if it worked. That's all for today. And if you're after a guide, there's a link in the description below and we'd encourage you to browse the other videos on our channel. If you love what we do, please give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. We'd love to meet with you there. And until next time, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.